in the interview with Rock Bottom, Rob DeLuca, bass player for UFO. Nice to have you in this radio show and this YouTube channel. Hello, Rob. My pleasure. Thank you. Glad to be yes. here. Rob, how is the run of this current tour? How are the reactions? It's been really good. I mean, it just started. We've only done two shows or two, three shows now. Um, so we're just get, getting our rolling. But uh, it's going really great. It's interesting because we're playing a, a lot of songs we didn't play last tour. So we're adjusting the set. We're yeah, changing yeah. things around. We're still feeling it out, you know, what's the perfect flow. But it's going really well, thank you. And it's a hard task to find the right set list. I saw the first set list and there are some songs, for example, Try Me or We Belong to the Night. They are new, uh, old songs, but new in this set. Right. We, well, I've never played uh, those two songs live until this tour. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is difficult. We're still moving things around to try to find what works best. And that'll take, you know, a few more shows until we have the perfect set list. Um, it's all part of the process. Ah, yeah, ah, yeah. So you're still the right, and it takes a little time to find yes. the right balance and the right set list. Yeah, that's good. And you are bass player for UFO for, I guess, six or seven years, but not official. You weren't an official member. You became an official member, I guess, last year. So what is the reason that it took so long until getting an official band member? I think um, it was it was a very lengthy audition. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> they took, you know, some people take their time with, with auditioning. They really took their time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, I'm not really sure of, of all that, like, because it's never been discussed, like, okay, your status is this and now your status has changed to this uh, uh, we yeah. still haven't talked about that which is fine it, it's 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 kind of just more like a natural thing where i think everyone um you know i've been around since 2008 is when yeah. i started when pete couldn't get into the u.s on the on april of 2008 so it's been a while now um yeah. so i mean help playing on the record sure certainly helps uh, yeah. that's you know people see me as more an intro, integral yeah. part, you know, so. So Pete was very important for this lineup. So how did the fans react on you? Because sometimes fans ask for the original of band course, member. Of course. So how did they, the fans accept you and how, the, how did the band um, accepted you? Well, I, th I think the fans have been very kind to me. Um, no one has been, you know, mean or anything like that. Um, so I feel like I've been pretty accepted from pretty early on um, but I do understand like I was a fan of, of UFO yeah. from when I was a kid you know um, so I do understand why people ask for original members it's t you know I and I, I I'm fine with that uh, because it's part of what they want they want to yeah. remember it how you know at a certain age how they saw it um, so that's that's cool, you know, and fans, even fans who may want Pete or Michael in the band, they're still nice to, yeah, to, yeah. to me and Vinny, you know, because at, at least the band is, is is playing, you know, and with those other guys, maybe the band wouldn't be playing, you know, I'm not sure, but... Pete is ill, I guess. He's not a healthy guy anymore, I guess. He that's had, what I hear. Yeah. I've never met either Pete or Michael, um, but... I hear Pete, you know, he just went through that cancer scare, yeah. which is huge, you know, like, and that's, it's amazing that, that he made it through that and he seems to be doing really well. I have talked to him online a couple of times oh, and yeah, he seems yeah. like a really great guy and he's, he seems very supportive of, of, of me, which is really nice. Yeah, that's um, and I, I, I want to be supportive of him too, you know. Well, he's a nice guy. I met him two or three times. Very nice guy. I'll bet. He seems, everyone's. Everyone like truly misses him, you know, because he's he's their brother, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And yeah, a conspiracy of stars. It's a new album. I heard it several times. It's a strong album. My consideration was um, Seven Deadly. Such a great album. It's the best album of the Winnie Moore period. But this album is much better, or a little bit better than um, Seven Deadly. That's my impression. So what is the reason for this search of energy and the search of creativity? What do you think? I think it's a, 
It's probably a few different factors. Um, well, I think the, the, the biggest factor is the fact that this is the live band since 2008 recording. Yeah. And we have a lot of experience together. We have a lot of chemistry. Um, we understand each other musically very well. We've done hundreds of shows all over the world. Mm -hmm. So it's there's there's something intangible about that that's just it just it, it's um it creeps in you know that that comfort of playing with each other and it cre so it was the first time we recorded together and i think yeah. that has a lot to do with it um also chris sangridis mm -hmm. um yeah. you know a, a producer who just let us be ourselves and he, and when he added something it was always something very good um and I think um, everyone just did a good job of bringing in strong material, I think. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, Phil really kicked ass as usual. <laughs> uh, that's nothing new, though. You know, he always he do, always makes great records, Phil does. So I think it's all those factors, you know, they're all little yeah, bit, yeah, yeah, but yeah. you add them all together, it makes, it's a big yeah. difference, you know? So... Um, it was a great experience, and I can't wait to do it again. You know, yeah, yeah. I think that I think this record is fantastic. Is I really, pretty? totally believe in this record, and I think the next one will be even better. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. every record from here on out will get better and better. Now, and you contributed two songs, the, the first "Killing Kind" and "One and Only," strong songs. So, was it easy thing to bring your ideas into the band, or um, did yeah. they yeah, have it was some easy. hesitations? No, it w they, they were very receptive and cool, and um, and so I submitted those songs, and Phil liked them right away. Um, I submitted a bunch of songs, and um, he chose those, and uh, no, they made me feel very, it was an intimidating process at all. Yeah, it made yeah, me feel yeah. very comfortable, yeah. which, which is amazing. And I read on the internet that the songs were um, written in the last summer, just a short period of time, or mm -hmm. um, pretty, pretty short period of time. Yeah, we got we we um, sent Phil some ideas at the beginning of the summer to, to hear, and he picked what he thought he liked, and then we went uh, to Hanover and rehearsed all these new ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were supposed to play in Russia, but there was the the, the problems, canceled, yeah. yeah, because of Crimea and uh, and um, Ukraine. So we took that week instead of going to Russia, and we went to Hanover and just got in a room and worked out all <laughs> these ideas. And I think that's another thing that I didn't mention from the last question. Another thing that makes it strong is we spent time together in a room rehearsing these songs, yeah, yeah. and uh, that's always going to help. You know, that's always going to make things better when you have the natural process of musicians hearing things and changing things and adapting, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And a lot of bands can't do that because they can't afford to get together. It's expensive, yeah. you know. <laughs> you know, hotels and rehearsal rooms and flights, it's very difficult. Yeah. And uh, so it maybe it was a blessing that we didn't, that we canceled those shows because it, it made the album stronger because of that. But that's that's a lot of factors that add up yeah, to make it a, yeah, yeah, make yeah. it a strong record. You know, it's like I said, it's all these little things, but all those little things, like five or six things, make one big thing. Yeah, of course, of course. And the producer Chris Sangaridis. Sangaridis. Um, yeah, how important was he? You mentioned it. Um, he's uh, yeah, well known. He worked with Judas Priest and Thin Lizzy and yeah, other well known bands. So was. He uh, important member Absolute. for this process. Absolutely, absolutely. Everyone was very, very important. Uh, sometimes you don't. When you have the right situation or person, you might not notice them yeah. all that much. Yeah. But when you have the wrong person, you <laughs> notice them a lot. So Chris is just—he's kind of low key, you know. He's just mellow, and he—he—he he, he, he just lets us be a rock band which is something we really know how to yeah. do well I mean UFOs you know been making records for 45 years like they need a producer like Chris who just lets them in, puts them in their comfort zone and lets them be themselves and he did that and he did and he he, he, he did great and he also mixed the record did a great job um, engineered the record like he made basically mm -hmm. did the record by himself and mm -hmm. he, it's a lot of work and uh 
his suggestions were great. So he was, I guess, I don't, he was an intern at the very first UFO album in 1970. Although he was an apprentice, did an apprenticeship at that time. Now he became a producer 45 years later. Until that time, it's a funny thing. Yeah, he was 14, I believe. Yeah, yeah. He's 14 years old. <laughs> so it's wild, right? Crazy, yeah, crazy. He's yeah. a very nice guy too. Yeah. Yeah, he's a real cool dude. Oh ah, yeah, and he has got his own studio in England and Kent. Yes. Oh ah, yeah, mm -hmm. but I guess Winnie Moore contributed his parts from his own studio. So is it he, easy uh, for working together? If one guy works in the United States and the others in England? Yeah, well, let me explain the process because Vinny was with us when we recorded. Ah, uh, yeah. And he laid down scratch guitars. Scratch means just, you know, uh, just uh, kind of practice guitars. And, um, and um, so we recorded together and it felt like a band. But then Vinny went home and... Then he had real the, the the real drums and the real bass to listen to and to really uh, yeah. listen to his parts. So then he recorded at home and sent them to Chris. So uh, was it difficult? No, not at all. Not at all. Ah, oh, yeah, ah, oh, yeah. Good to know. And I guess um, there are some. I'm not quite sure if it's true or not. Um, there are some jazzy parts on this record for Precious Cargo. It's a little bit jazzy tunes. Some j yeah, jazz. Is it, is it was it intentional or um, did it happen just in that way? You would have to ask Vinny that. But, uh, yeah. but knowing Vinny, you know he's so um, varied in style. He has yeah. he has such a wide scope of abilities and yeah. and uh, playing styles. You know, I'm sure he just uh, heard that there in his imagination and. It, comes out quick with him, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. Doesn't take him long, you know. So I, uh, he's his playing on the record is just fantastic, you know. It's it really is really great, yeah. Outstanding play and it, it, it's a it's a great album for guitar players, you know. Yeah. Because there's just so much interesting guitar playing yeah. on it, you know. Like it's a perfect album for for a young guitar player to listen to, yeah, you know. Yeah. From songwriting to soloing to you know rhythms and. You know. Yeah. No, I must admit it's a really great album, guitar-wise and Absolutely. otherwise. And thank you. It's yeah, a good blend of all instruments and a good, uh, great songs. Very song oriented. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, f I really love the record a lot. So normally these so-called guitar heroes like Willie Moore or other Ingrid Malmsteen or other guys, they just try to solo they try to bring the solos into the music and the guitar stands up front but i guess in this case there's no danger that one instrument will take the foreground that's my impression and also Vinny is as focused on songwriting i th i th i think um you'd have to talk to him about that but i think he seems to be as focused on songwriting as he is on soloing and some guitar heroes are more focused on soloing yeah that's than it you know, or more focused on soloing and rhythm playing. Like Vinny is very focused on rhythm playing, on songwriting ah, yeah. and soloing too, you know? Oh, yeah. And um, I guess this lineup is a very stable one because Vinny is member since 2003 three or four, I guess. and More than 10 years. It seems like an intact family. And the yeah. years before, there were many changes in UFO, but this time it's a very yeah, stable lineup. Yeah, I think it's 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 good for for people to see the band being consistent. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, because I think there was years where Michael was quitting. You yeah, know, that people just looked at the band as as inconsistent. Yeah, and since Vinny's come in, it's it's you know it's solid. You know, <laughs> that's my impression as well. And uh, living in different countries, I guess you are American and Vinny as well, and Andy lives in the United Sta States as well. I guess Phil and Paul live in England. Mm -hmm. So is it a hard task for c composing, songwriting, rehearsing, or? Um, yeah, uh, yeah, in a way, sure. You know, like we can't just do it 
on a whim. You know, it's got it's it takes a lot of planning yeah, to yeah, get yeah. us together. So, you know, w we did this tour, for instance. We we flew to Hanover, mm -hmm. and we rehearsed in Hanover for a couple of days. Oh yeah. Uh, and then we drove to the first gig, which is was in Barbie. Oh yeah. So we, we met the bus in Hanover and um, and drove to Barbie and played. So mm -hmm. um, so yeah, what we do is we come in a couple of days early, and just you know go to a rehearsal room.